So as you eat, I'm going to just, uh, we're going to look at a little, that section of God's Word that we just talked about. Um, but if you just take a second, stop for a second, let's pray again. Father, as we listen to your Word, we pray that just as this food is nourishing our bodies, your Word will nourish our, our souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, choices. Everything that you do, you have a choice, right? Uh, this morning, if you came here, you chose not to sleep in. Um, if you came to, uh, maybe if you went back there and you filled up your plate and you filled up your plate with that, uh, the biscuits and gravy and, and put some fruit on there and some other stuff, maybe you ran out of space and there wasn't room for the eggs. It could have happened, right? Um, whatever you do, there's a choice. Like, for example, if you have $5 and you spend it at, at Starbucks, you can't spend it at Dairy Queen. Just that, that $5. Maybe you got another $5 that you can. And every choice is like that. Um, in economics, probably you don't care about this, but it's called opportunity cost. The potential benefits that an investor or an individual or an investor or business misses out on when choosing one alternative over another. I mean, that's what happens. You have to choose. Now, that's exactly what Jesus was doing with Peter and his brother Andrew. See, they were fishermen. And their life was all about nets, right? They had all these nets. This isn't a real fishing net, but it, they had nets. And the net was very important to them. It was their, their life. It was everything that they had. To, that's where they got their, their money and their livelihood. Uh, it's probably where they got their definition of who they were, right? I mean, that's what everything was in their life up to the point that this rabbi comes up and shows up by the boat and he says this. I'll read it because some of you have your mouths full. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Can you imagine that? So I don't know what like defines you and what's most important in your life. But if you think about that, and Jesus coming up to you when you're in the middle of that, and he says, all right, follow me. And I'm going to make you do something different than you've ever done before. That's hard. It's hard to think about that. But Jesus does call us to let go of nets. But it's not a one-time thing, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. That's always amazing to me that these guys were able to just say, okay, all right, toss it aside. This is my livelihood. This is who I am, but I'm going to toss it aside. And when I used to read this when I was young, I always kind of thought they did that and they followed Jesus, end of story. But if you look at Peter's life, his whole life, was a life of, of, of letting go again. You know, remember Jesus and, and there's all these people around Jesus and they're all leaving Jesus. And he says, are you going to leave too? And Peter's got to decide. Is he going to leave or is he going to stay? And he says, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And he leaves again. He leaves his nets. And then at the end of, uh, the end of the story, after Jesus died and came back to life again, Peter's tired of waiting for Jesus. And remember, what does he do? He goes back to his boat and starts fishing again. He goes back and he picks up his nets. And he's back out there fishing, of course, not catching anything until some guy on the shore that he can't even see who it is says, put the net down on the other side of the boat. And he catches all these fish. And what does Peter do? Jumps into the water and runs to Jesus again because he has to let go of those nets another time, right? And then he goes on and we, we hear about James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, and they're in their boat with their father, mending their nets, again, the nets. They've got something that's holding on to their life and they're, they're holding on to those things. And Jesus calls them and they do the same thing that Peter does. Immediately, they left the boat, their father, and followed him. But it doesn't just happen that one time. In fact, I love this verse here. It says, then if any, he said to them all, and this is to everybody, right? If anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. I heard this once, that our life is not just the leaving of nets one time. But as we look back over our life, we see a whole trail of nets behind us. Because there's all sorts of things that we have to say, Lord, i got to let that go of that. i got to let go of that. 
And some of those things are physical things, but a lot of them are, are other types of things, like our pride or maybe our, our desire for comfort or control, or maybe it's letting go of our anxiety or, or greed or, or any number of things. It comes down to letting go of self, right? But I want you, as you eat, just to spend a little time talking with each other. Think about it in your life. So what is it? What are the nets that you, that you must leave? What are the nets that are keeping you from being able to follow Jesus like he wants you to follow him? Hey, just spend a little time chatting together while you're eating. Just, and then if somebody at the table who's done eating or, or wants to, wants to take a couple notes, we'll just share with each other. Just share at your table. What are some of those things that, go ahead. That means you have to talk to each other. <laughs> I get that. I can throw off my microphone. I don't want to have.
Khan again. That's on. Okay, good. So does anybody want to share from their table something, one of those nets? Anybody have a net they'd like to share? We, well, I'll, I'll start with ours. You know, we talked about the, the difficulty of letting go of that net of control. We want to control things. We want things to go our way. Um, we talked about also the net of, of judging other people, that that sometimes is a net with that, that holds us back from following Jesus because we think we can uh, judge others. And then the other one that we talked about was guilt. Guilt can be one of those things that, you know, we, we uh, can hold us back and that we have to let go of. How about anybody else? Anxiety. Anxiety. Okay. That can be one of those things that we need to let go again and again sometimes. Anybody else? The what ifs. The what ifs. Yeah. Fear, pride, regrets. Regrets. Yeah. Yeah, it should have been autos. Okay, letting go of other people's expectations. Yeah. Any other tables have something? Elder care. Elder care, yeah. That can be something, right, that gets in the, the way. I mean, it's, yeah. Sometimes it can be, yeah, it's hard as we follow Jesus. Jesus. Um, those things in our lives get in the way of our following Jesus. You know, it just uh, things we could do before we can't do now. Right? Yeah. Issues. Health issues, yeah. yeah. Control. control. Yeah. Yeah, what we think God should do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very good. Yes? After I moved to California and I bought a brand new refrigerator freezer, I didn't want to go someplace and give up my brand new refrigerator freezer. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you don't want to... <laughs> it, it can be that simple, right? It can be that simple. It's something that, that you're connected to. Now, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, to be yeah, and and that really happened to like Peter, right, and those guys, because they had to leave the world that they knew and were a part of, and say, "I'm going to step into this new world." Yeah, that's that's true. Huh. And sometimes, you know, that, that happens again and again because we find ourselves in a community and we say, look, I've got to be in a place that's healthy and a place that's, that's helping us to grow in, in our discipleship in Jesus. Yeah. Um, this is another question. Oops. What keeps us from leaving those nets? And I'll just throw that open for us all real quickly because I don't want to go too long. Cause, um, but, but what keeps us from giving up those nets? What are the, what, what's the barrier? Scared, fear. Yeah. Anything else? Always the failure is you fail at what you're gonna you're giving up the net for might not work out and maybe the net won't be there anymore. Yeah, if you jump out of the boat, what if there's not gonna you know, what what are you gonna there's there's no boat anymore. What that that's what I, that's comfort. I, I I know what I had. Sometimes it's sinful pleasure. Sinful pleasure, yeah, I just want what I want. <laughs> yeah, I can be that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. You're, you're leaving. You're leaving the boat, dude. What am I gonna eat? Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You're leaving the boat, and we're we're supposed to be at home, and what are we supposed to eat while you're right? So it can be other people's expectations, you know, and and you know it can be my faith, but it affects other people's faith. Yeah. Very good. Security. Comfort. Security. Yeah. Deanna? (laughs) 
Well, yeah, you know, and, and I, I kind of wonder about that when Peter jumps out of the boat to go see Jesus. If he's got this idea, I'll just walk on the water. Because he puts on his clothes, right? And he jumps in like he's going to walk across the water, but he has to swim to shore. So maybe he thought that was going to happen too. And it doesn't happen always the way we think it's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, choosing courage over comfort. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to end with the, our, this part of our discussion real quickly. Um, this is a quote from a man named Jim Elliott. Jim Elliott was a missionary that went down to uh, reach an unreached people group in South America. Uh, if you ever saw the, the movie that was out a while back called End of the Spear, it tells the story of these guys. Um, this group had never been touched by outsiders, and when the missionaries came to try to make contact with them, they were killed. Um, and so Jim Elliott was one of those young missionaries, 23, I think, or 24, uh, when he was killed trying to share the gospel with these folks. Um, then his wife went down and ended up becoming, working with those people and, and sharing the good news of Jesus with them. But, uh, but this quote, I think, is, is really powerful. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Jesus lived for us and died for us. And he calls us, yeah, he calls us sometimes to let go of things that are comfortable for us. He calls us to take risks because of our faith. But he will always come through in the end. The thing is, is that his promises will always come through. It's hard to see sometimes. We were talking about a story here in the Old Testament um, where the, the priests were carrying the, the Ark of the Covenant with the Ten Commandments and they stepped into the water. Well, if you read the story closely, when they stepped into the water, God stopped the water, but he stopped it 13 miles upstream. So when they stepped in the water, nothing happened. You know, they, they, they heard the water was going to stop, but it didn't at that time. And I feel like sometimes in our life it's that way. You step into the water and say, Lord, nothing's happening here. Um, but it's choosing that faith, that courage over fear. Um, and I just hope those are some thoughts. It's been really good to hear you talking with each other as we grow together as the, the people of God. So um, let's pray together. Father, thank you for calling us, uh, for calling us out of uh, the ordinary life that we have to follow you each and every day. Help us to understand what that means and give us the courage to be able to leave those nets behind that are keeping us from truly following you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.